Hello, my name is Madhulika Little and today I'm here to read out an excerpt from this book called Indian Christmas. I have an introduction to this book called Christmas in Many Flavors. According to the annals of the Mambali Royal Biscuit Factory in Thalassery, Kerala, it's found the Mambali Bapu baked the first Christmas cake in India. It said that Bapu, who trained as a baker in Burma, set up the bakery in 1880. In 1883, at the instance of an East India Company spice planter who supplied Bapu with a sample of an imported Christmas cake, along with some ingredients, he set about trying to create a Christmas cake. Mambali Bapu's cake is supposed to have contained, among other ingredients, cocoa and dried fruit. Given that baking powder wasn't around, Bapu used a local brew fermented from cashew apples and banana to help the cake rise. I wonder what that first Christmas cake tasted like. How close to the many thousands of cakes still baked and consumed at Christmas in Kerala. Or for that matter, the many more made across India. Similar to these, I suppose, but possibly with its own distinctive flavour. Which, happily enough, might be said for just about any Christmas cake in India. The general impression of a cake, rich in raisins and gaudy truthy fruity, dark with caramel, and with a distinct booziness to it is all very well, but there are more variations across India than one can count. The Allahabadi version, for instance, uses peta, candy dash curd, as a part of the fruit component, ghee instead of butter, and adds a generous dollop of orange marmalade to the mix. Maharashtrians may add chironji or kudappa almond to their cake. Most recipes from Kerala and Tamil Nadu include cashew nuts. The Goan black cake derives its colour from a caramel taken really far. Our Christmas cakes are a reflection of how India celebrates Christmas, with its own regional flair, its own flavour. Some elements are the same almost everywhere, others differ widely. What binds them together is that they are all in their way, a celebration of the most exuberant festival in the Christian calendar. While hotels and restaurants in big cities lay out spreads of roast turkey, or chicken more often, roast potatoes and Christmas puddings, the average Indian Christian household may have a Christmas feast that comprises largely of markedly regional dishes. In Kerala, for instance, duck curry with appams is likely to be the piece de resistance. In Nagaland, pork curry is rich in chilies and bamboo shoots are popular, and a whole roast suckling pig with spicy chutneys to accompany it may hold centre stage. A sausage pulao, Sorpotel and Shakuti would be part of the spread in Goa. And out across a wide swathe of North India, biryanis, curries and chami kebabs are de rigueur at Christmas. Of course, as any self-respecting connoisseur of Christmas feasting knows, it's not just the meals, it's also the snacks. In the West, these may include Christmas cake, mince pies and the like. In India, barring the Christmas cake in its varying forms, the range of snacks can be mind-bogglingly vast and calorific. Among the East Indians of Mumbai, for instance, milk creams, mava-filled karanjis or puffs, walnut fudge, guava cheese and kalkals are a must. Kalkals, quiggly, sweet, fried dough curls, are also popular in Goa, where there are plenty of other snacks as well, mostly served as what is known as kuswar, a platter of goodies that can include a wide range of goodies, of which the main ingredients might range from coconut to chana dal. In Kerala, lacy crisp dough cookies are popular, rose cookies are popular, as are diamond cuts, sweet fried dough covered in syrup. Diamond cuts known in Hindi as shakkar para are common across North India as well as in Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, they form an integral part of faral, the spread of sweet and savoury snacks that's so much a part of Christmas feasting. In places like rural Jharkhand, the Christmas cake itself may be replaced by a deep-fried rice, rice flour sweet known as airsa. There are other aspects of Christmas celebrations. The Christmas bazaars, now increasingly fashionable in bigger cities. The choral Christmas concerts and Christmas parties. The latter often not merely the smaller do's confined to household and its friends, but big community affairs with dancing, community feasts, Christmas songs and general bonhomie. Across the Chota Nagpur area, tribal Christians celebrate with a community picnic lunch, while many coastal villages in Kerala 
have a tradition of partying on beaches, with the partying spilling over into catamarans going out into the turf. In Kolkata's predominantly Anglo-Indian enclave of Bo Bazaar, Santa Claus traditionally comes to the party in a rickshaw. And in much of Northeast India, the entire community may indulge in a potluck community feast at Christmas time. This is India, an India where Rangolis and Kolams, Gujias and Faral, Mango leaves and Dholaks have all traditionally been part of indigenous celebrations. A land where instead of wholesale and mindless importing of Christmas ideas, we've been discerning. Where we bring in all our favourite and familiar ideas of what a celebration should be and fit them together into a fiesta all our own. Missionaries to Indian shores, whether St. Thomas or later evangelists from Portugal, France, Britain or wherever brought us to religion. We adopted the faith, but reserved for ourselves the right to decide how we celebrate its festivals. Merry Christmas and have a wonderful festival and have a great new year.